Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we are looking at Welcome to Beacon Pines or Beacon Pines. Um, it is by Hiding Spot. It's a choose your own adventure, exploration, cutesy game. It's part of the games we're looking at for Ludo Narrowcon. And I'm very excited to look at all these narrative games. It's been a while since I let myself, I guess, get caught up in a good story because school and all that, but I'm basically done now, so one more time, and I'm very excited. Um, you play as both the reader and the storybook characters, which is really intriguing um, to me. It's single player, has full controller support if that's your kind of thing. Um, the release date's to be determined, but you can which list it on Steam, so you should do that. And it also had a really successful Kickstarter that ended on 413, so it's got a lot of support behind it. It's not one you're gonna like play the demo and be disappointed when it doesn't come to true fruition. I really think this is going to be a game to like look out for and I want to get the whole thing eventually, I think. And so let's let's see where the story goes. Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you had not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. Without you, there is no story. It's a never-ending story. Chapter 1 Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley in the town of Beacon Pines, far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. Aww. Such great design. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he is here for a reason. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's very pretty, too. Character design looks great. Space. Hey, Dad. Oh. The morning light filtered through the trees onto the gravestone. How are things going? A gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. I was six years old when you died, and it's been six years now. From here on out, you'll have been long gone longer than you were here. Feels like that should mean something. Mom always said this tree was your favorite spot in the world. Let's see why. Me too. Aww. Hey, a friend. Hey, Luca. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. I knew I'd find you here. Well, after I banged on your door till your grand answered, he possessed many fine qualities. But subtlety was not one of them. My favorite kind of people. And after I checked the pond and climbed up the tree house, then I knew you'd find you here. <laughs> Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Oh, yeah, right. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing that now that your mom's gone too. What? She's not gone. She's just m missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she was missing. She's going to come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Hmm. That was rough, man. Okay, Dad, see you next time. That was really rough. This poor kid. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. Ooh, where do we get to go? Oh, this is neat. Look how pretty this Oh my gosh, look at Dandelions for everyone. Oh, <laughs> you sneezed. Tickle. What is that? See. Wonderful. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Okay. Can I run through these ones too? <gasps> that is amazing. Okay, it's so cute. Ooh, a scarecrow. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. You know the abandoned warehouse by my place? 
The old Valentine building? Yeah, well, it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. <laughs> that place has been empty since... Since before the fallow harvest. Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. What honesty. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. What do you expect to find there? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Luca. Remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? And you jumped in and said it was your fault before my paw throttled me? This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. I've got your back. Thanks, Rolo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly what I, how I want to spend the first day of summer. <laughs> he seems like a really great friend. Their dynamic is really adorable. So they say he's 12. So his friend is probably like somewhere between 11 and 12 too. It's just, this is adorable. Great. Mm. Under the shade of an old straw hat, the scarecrow held his knowing smirk. One of its button eyes had been pecked out by a brush crow. Crow, I can talk. Creating the impression of an eternal week. Interesting. Is there anything back here? Wait, did I jump? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so cute. Okay, let's keep going. To the house. It's my house. Alright, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your grand smells kind of funny. Well, see it yourself. I won't be long. That's not very nice. Okay. Oh, their house is so cute. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They have been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Ooh. Just some dusty knickknacks. Okay, okay, cool. Ooh, a couch. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery, flowery fabric. Yeah, that sounds about right. Here. The drawer is packed with his dad's old baseball card collection, and urge to collect things was passed on to Luca. So fair. I understand that urge. <laughs> oh. Alright, well that's adorable. Ponder. Ooh, we got a new charm. <laughs> that's how my dog gets off the couch. Grand had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. It's fair. Alright, let's see. Is this the kitchen? Yeah. Ooh, it's pretty. Look at those flowers. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. Sounds about right. Junk. Everyone needs a junk charm. Well, I can turn the water on and off. That's interesting. I don't know what might be useful later. Anything else we can look at? Ooh, there's more flowers up there. That bread looks yummy too. Oop. Something's gone wrong in there. Oop. Don't just leave it open. Outside. Oh, he's here. Oh my, this is quite exciting. I'm now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of the charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. You can use the various charms you have collected to alter events and thus completely rewrite the fate of Beacon Pines. This is no small thing. So step forth, dear reader, and grasp hold of destiny itself. Oh, this is going to be so interesting. So for those of you who don't know, I kind of have a little hang up with my anxiety. And like, this is fine. It doesn't like trigger anything for me. But I kind of get hung up in real life over these kinds of decisions if I can see them coming. Like if I know a decision I'm going to make is a turning point. Like me and Bo deciding to move. Me moving to Washington the first thing. Things like that. It can be really hard for me because I can see at least in my mind, what feels like clearly, which what's going to have what outcomes. So this should be interesting experiment for me. 
Ooh, is there anything over here? No. Oh, we can just run straight across here. That's awesome. Book! Beginner's Guide to Gardening. Laid open on the bench. Nice. Hello! She's... Oh my gosh, this character design in this game is just fantastic. Like, I think I like these characters more than even my Animal Crossing ones. Like, they're just, it's absolutely gorgeous. Hey, Gran, I'm gonna go, for Pete's sake, go change out of your pajamas before you say another word. But, but nothing. Inside, clothes are for inside. And outside, clothes are for outside. Lucas stared at his feet and muttered under his breath. Mom always let me wear pajamas in the garden. Well, Eleanor isn't here, is she? Now go upstairs, change, and then we'll talk. She didn't use her cane. Right. Of course, I forgot about the pajamas. Thanks, book. You're just tie my back. Alright, guess we're going upstairs. Ooh, Luca passed out of his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in there yet. That's valid. Gran had com commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Ooh, hide. Is this my room? Aw, it's cute. What's in here? Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Oh, that's, that's adorable. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Chill. Those are so cool. I want them as trading cards. Grand's moving is meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. That's fair. Like, it's your house. I mean, I get it. She's the adult, but I can understand why he'd be frustrated. Gran's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. That's fair. Why is she staying in here? Why didn't she stay in the parents' room? Not like a mean way, just like, I'm assuming, because the way she said Eleanor, not your mom, that potentially she is his mom's mom, like that grandma. And so it would make sense, I guess, that she might be feel comfortable sleeping in there, but I don't know. Might be too awkward. Okay, I'm gonna go hang with Rollo for the day. See you later. Hold up now. Where are you and Rollo headed exactly? Oh, no, we're special. Not to the elephant graveyard. The less grand new, the better for everyone involved. Ooh, what is this? We were just gonna go blank for the day. Oh, ponder, hide, or chill. You get to pick what you say? Okay, that's cool. We're gonna go with chill. We were just gonna go chill for the day. That's what friends do. That's very teen language. The best lies are built on the truth. <laughs> you boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. <laughs> well, make sure you are done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Okay. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point with, without too much of a mess. With no mess, thank you very much. That is the power of charms. A simple word can change the course of history. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. Ooh, what's this? I'm excited. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point, which has been revealed. Okay, yeah. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. This conversation with Grand seems innocent enough. The perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. A grand jury. <laughs> um, I guess let's say ponder and see what she says. This game wants me to choose. We're just gonna ponder for the day. Oh, really? What are you boys going to ponder on such a lovely day exactly? This was Luca's chance to sell his alibi. Uh, you know, big stuff. Small stuff. Medium, mostly medium pondering. Nailed it. Well, make sure you don't overburden yourself with preponderous of pondering. Huh? Oh, forget it. Off with you now. <laughs> that was an amazing sentence. Okay, now we have to just see. Oh, no, that's not what I meant to do. It's giving me, like, Life is Strange Rewind vibes. Let's try hide just to see what she says. have to check. We were just gonna go hide for the day. Hide? Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. 
Yeah, I guess we're all about some other kids that we could beat them at hide and seek. Aren't you a little old for that? No way. I played hide and seek at my high school graduation, like, friend party. Anyway. It's not like there's there's much else to do around here. Well, make sure you boys are done playing your little game in time for supper. All's well that ends well. I like that none of them could have gone super bad, but I want to go back to the branch of me saying the chill one. There we go. Stay on this branch. So it was my initial instinct. So I don't know how long these videos for um, Ludo Narakon or Narakon, I'm not sure I'm saying that exactly right, um, how long they're going to be, it'll, I guess, depend on the demo. If I have to split some of the demos up to more than one video, um, that just might be what we do if I'm really, like, enjoying it. Or I might just finish some of them, um, off camera. Come on, come on! Woo! I love him. Dang it, Rolo. Like the Rolo the third. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. I really like it though. He, so he went this way. So I could have gone the other way. Ooh, is this like, is this like town? Interesting. That's cute. Hello. Oh, they're sleeping. Hello. Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Iggy, I can't do it or we pound you. Yep. Yeah, but my mom said, yeah, but, yeah, but, if I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be a freaking king of nickels. Ain't that right, Tish? Yep. Leave it alone. Hey, Luca. Looks like you guys are in a hurry. I'm just keeping an eye on my boat. SS Mary Times. That's adorable. Alright, come on, Rolo. I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. Beacon, beacon. Oh. Hey, Mr. Wilder. Morning, Luca. What's the day have in store for you? I was wondering if you heard any news about news. The beacon, beacon knows the news that needs knowing. Any news about the old fertilizer warehouse? Nope. Oh. Rollo thought he saw some lights there last night. Hmm. Rollo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. The winds of change are blowing, and change is a dangerous animal. Change. Twins. That's usually a threat in these kind of, like, scenarios. Hey, Miss Nelson. Morning, Luca. Any big plans for summer? Not really. Heard anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Can't say I have. Either way, a dusty old warehouse is no place for a young boy. You be safe now. Thanks. This hatch could often be found near the fountain. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. The two wandered down the wooden path, unaware of the danger ahead. Oh! Oh, this is getting good! <laughs> and we end up in a wooden path later, just remind me about that. Luca, just the fellow I was looking for. Hey, Roxy, what's up? Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at your disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Have you seen my idiot brother today? He skipped out before breakfast. Well... Not really, no. Can't say I have. Can't say or won't say. Come on, Roxy, would I lie to you? <laughs> Good timing. Luca, wait up! I almost forgot to tell you. Roxy might be looking around here. This one of our favorite places to stand around and be useless. Rolo? So we need to make sure she doesn't spot us. Rolo. <laughs> back and forth. Why are you doing that turning thing with your body? What? You're not scared, scared are you? She's harmless. And stupid. And she's around at that corner, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Don't mind me, just over here lurking, uselessly. Oh, hey sis. Nice weather we're having, eh? I couldn't help but notice you snuck out this morning before breakfast. Wasn't hungry. Also couldn't help but notice your morning chores were left unchored. Must have slipped my mind, thanks for letting me know. Anyways, Luca and I have places to be, so if you don't mind... Oh, I do mind. I'm not gonna catch hell again because of you. So either you march yourself home and feed those chickens, or I haul you home myself. 
Rolo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an arranged Roxy was to be a little... chill? No? That's all we have? So later, I'm assuming we'll get one and then we can come back and change this outcome. It's interesting. Come on, Roxy, it's the first day of summer, the sun's shining, and we just want to take it easy. Let's leave tomorrow's problems for tomorrow. That's great and all, but Rolo's problems have a way of becoming my problems. And Paul always says tomorrow's work is best left for yesterday. March, you big oaf. Aw, rats. Expect a full report about the Valentine place. Full report! The thing is, though, I get where Roxy's coming from. I was always the sibling that got stuck doing everyone else's chores, because... I was the, the responsible one, and it does kind of suck. So, Fitz, what are you up to this lovely day? Nope. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> That's funny. Duke Valentine, founder of Deacon Pines. Never under underestimate what a great man can do on his own. Bit much, if you ask me. Oh, fair. Ooh, a bookshop is closed. Miss Novak's bookstore was often closed up until after lunch. Rummaging through the dusty piles of books was one of Luca's favorite ways to kill time. Might you, might you, man. Luca, my boy, hold up a tick. Oh, hey, Mr. Nuncreed. I was just on my way to... I just sold the last jar of your grandmother's preserves. Can't stock the shelves fast enough, turns out. Hey, that's great, but I'm actually... I guess Juniper will just have to swing by with more of her lovely jam. Uh-huh. Well, don't let this old man slow you down. You just remind her that she, she owes me that dance. Promise Gran regretted the second she made it. Will do. She's a fine woman, that Juniper. Yeah, she's pretty cool, I guess. A real fine woman. Oh, uh, gotta go. S wait, sweeter than any jam on earth. Oh, gosh. I think you should say that to, like, a 12-year-old. The phone, the phone booth is brand new. Part of the town... Town's Beacon Pines were born initiative. Didn't see much use. I imagine not. Um, I don't know which way we're supposed to go. Is that a beehive? Oh, we can't go. I thought maybe we could follow that. Well, let's go. Oh, yeah, this seems smart. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weep Wood. Okay, no turning back now. Caution, electrified fence. Is that sign new? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Oh, so what would Rolo do if he was here? Or, okay, what would Rolo do if he was here? Luca often asked himself what Rolo would do, so that he could rule out that option. <laughs> I'm definitely not touching that thing. I can throw it. Ah! As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Perfect. That's two. And I'll do this side. Nice. Like that, my naturally destructive behavior led somewhere. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Okay, moment of truth. We did it! Every kid in town knew the old Valentine fertilizer building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heat at Beacon Pines. Now it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant buildings sh showed strange signs of life. Okay, so Rolo wasn't exaggerating for once. What's going on here? There's only one way to find out. It's true. Wow, that sounds awful. Too bad Rolo's not here. We'd have no problem poking around in there. Oh, the water effects. Water looked almost diseased. A glowing sludge gathered in blobs at the surface. It slowly full flowed into the woods. Oh, maybe I shouldn't be running around in it. The hose emitted a subtle sound. It was actively draining some kind of liquid. It's weird. Locked. Luca thought he heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. He pressed his ear against the cold bundle to hear better. A zipper? Footsteps? The sound of footsteps grew louder. They're coming closer. Hi! Hello? Ah! What is this? Dot 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 shit. Ah, okay. 
Uh oh, oh no. A heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged towards him. He tried to scramble away, but felt the gloved hand locked onto his ankle. Luca watched its fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. This is a story about uh, pain. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself, but change is after all a dangerous animal. The end? No way! He died. Alright, well I guess that's a perfect- I don't know what means that other option. I guess that's a perfect, um, place to stop for now. So, yeah, I'm gonna- I don't know how much longer the demo is, but I can already tell. I'm gonna end up playing this entire game once it releases. I wish I'd seen it on Kickstarter to back it. Um, yeah, so this so far is Beacon Pines. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Let me know what you think so far down in the comments, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys! <laughs>